Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration's public workshop on IBR and incorporation by reference. Most notably, it's really a focus on uh, Section 24 of the new Pipeline Safety Regulatory Certainty and Job Creation Act of 2011. First, um, welcome to our webcast participants and everyone in the audience. Thank you very much for coming. We're very excited about uh, this morning and the panels as well as the latter half of the afternoon, uh, which is a workshop session to help us really dig into the implementation of Section 24. I am Vanessa Allen Sutherland, Chief Counsel at FEMSA. I will be co-hosting this event with Jeannie Layson, our Director of Governmental, Congressional, and Public Affairs at FEMSA. In a moment, Jeannie will tell you a little bit about the overview of today um, and some logistical details. Um, and first, just a couple of orders of business. I would very much like to thank uh, several people for helping us put this together. Any kind of event like this requires a lot of folks, and they often don't get thank yous um, for executing this well. So thank you to our legal interns, um, our internal DOT IBR team, several folks in the public affairs group, and the DOT Media Center for their hard work and contributions to organizing this event. Um, this morning, Jeannie and I, um, after giving an overview, We'll start with the morning panels, which will commence with a history and overview of I IBR and related laws. We're going to use incorporation by reference and IBR all day. Any other acronyms, feel free to interrupt us. We know that there are webcast folks who may not be as familiar with that. Um, but we will then follow the overview with just a broad understanding of how FEMSA uses uh, voluntary consensus standards in its rulemaking process, just a statistical analysis both from the pipeline and hazardous materials side of the House of how many we use um, and how they facilitate our rulemaking, and then close out the morning before lunch with a facilitated discussion about Section 24 and some of the feedback we receive from various stakeholders about how to best implement it and some of the issues or challenges uh, that they have identified. Before we get started and before I turn it over to Jeannie, I just wanted to level set. Part of the reason we're having the morning session is to make sure that everyone is working off of the same basic understanding of what the provision is, what it means. Um, so Section 24 requires that FEMSA, it, this is not a, a HAZMAT related issue, but the pipeline program only use voluntary consensus standards if they are available for free to the public on the Internet. Um, as a result, various groups contacted us by mail and email identifying some potential concerns, issues, or challenges um, as they saw it in implementing that section. So we are holding this workshop to assure two things. First, that everyone's uh, issues and comments are heard, and number two, that we facilitate a discussion in order to figure out how to most effectively and efficiently work through Section 24. Uh, there are, as many of you know, concurrent government efforts underway. There was an Office of Federal Register notice, an OMB workshop, I believe, about a month or two ago, um, and several BAR and ACUS-related uh, uh, materials and guidance on this topic. So we are trying to collaborate um, and make sure that we incorporate all of the efforts that are related to um, our IBR issue at the moment. So Jeannie is going to take a brief moment to provide you with an overview and some logistics and to introduce our first panelists. Thank you, Vanessa, and good morning to everyone. Thank you for being here, and uh, thank you to those who are tuning in on the webcast today. Uh, as Vanessa said, we are here today to discuss FEMSA's implementation of the requirement that the agency forego using voluntary consensus standards that are incorporated by reference unless those standards are available free to the public on the Internet. And essentially, this is a topic about transparency and inclusion. The idea that the public should have access to those standards that are the backbone of regulations that impact our daily lives. However, we have been made aware of challenges regarding its implementation, and we recognize that government doesn't always have all of the answers or solutions. And that's why we have brought together a wide variety of experts from government agencies, the private sector, and public interest groups. And in the spirit of the requirement, our goal today is to have a workshop with all of you to figure out the most efficient and effective way to comply. And just as important, we are having this discussion in public. Today's workshop is an example of how government should operate and conduct its business in a collaborative, transparent, and inclusive manner. 
And now I'll cover the logistics and housekeeping for today. Uh, first of all, everyone please turn your cell phones off or put them on silent. Thank you very much. Uh, for the panelists, there is no need to move or turn on your microphones. The good folks here at the Media Center handle all of that automatically for us. Uh, Wi-Fi is available for those of you here. Uh, the guest username is pipe and hazard, all spelled out, all lowercase. And the password is summertime2012, capital S. Uh, please note that we do not ex uh, exercise control over the data that may be passing through that network. Uh, restrooms are located outside of the media center to the right. And since safety is our top priority here at the Department of Transportation, in the very unlikely event of an evacuation, exit the building the way you came in, take a left, and walk towards the river. Uh, first, for the webcast audience, uh, as Vanessa said, who may not be familiar with government acronyms, we would ask everyone today to please try and limit the use of those or please uh, explain what the acronym means. Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, and as Vanessa said this morning, you will hear about the history of incorporating standards by reference as well as FEMSA's use of voluntary consent of standards. And after panel two, we will hear from members of the public who signed up to deliver statements. We'll have lunch from 12.35 to 1.30 in the Oklahoma room. And the last panel of the day will be a facilitated discussion about the most effective and efficient ways to comply with Section 24. And during this, this segment, we will take questions from the audience, as well as questions from those who are watching via the webcast. Uh, just go to FEMSA.DOT.gov. Uh, the link is on the home page. Click on that and follow the instructions. And we will take as many questions uh, as time permits. So thank you to everyone for being here. We've got a lot of work to do today, so let's get started. On the first panel, we have Emily Brimmer, 